Chris Redfield in Antarctica. He is here to look for his sister, as we well know. But we also know that some serious stuff happened here in Antarctica. Chris doesn't know about it, but we do. Emergency evacuation elevator. Hmm. You're saying that we might have to evacuate this place very quickly at some point. Maybe something to keep in mind. So, what happened ever since Alexia woke up? Well, we got tentacles. We're in the- yeah, we're in the Biff. Antarctic Transport Terminal Biff. And there's a tentacle coming through the wall. You might remember that, uh, after Alexia woke up, she tentacled, uh, Claire and Steve. There's the plane. And more te another tentacle. They're just kind of lying around the place. Okay, let's see how things have changed since we were last year. Well, since Claire was. Chris hasn't been here. Right. There's ice. So, you might remember that when Claire and Steve left the place, they, like, bust through the wall, and the place flooded. It's also cold. So now there's, like, a lot of ice. And something underneath it. You might remember that earlier in the B.O.W. room, there was a spider crawling underneath the floor. We couldn't kill it. We then unleashed the anti-B.O.W. gas in that room. So, weird, like, little lore thing. The anti-B.O.W. gas was in Resident Evil 2. And when you use it, it would weaken enemies. But then, like, later on, they would get stronger than they were before because of long-term exposure to the gas. So that's the same spider. Post gas. It's got real big. But it, it can't get through. This ice is very thick. But what's here? A large man whose hands are tied hangs here. So that's Nosferatu. Someone hung him up on this crane and froze the cr froze him. Control panel for the crane, but I need the crane key. I do not have a key for this crane. All right, well, as Claire, I was not able to get to this door. That door is new. But before we go in there, we might as well go into the rooms that we have been in before and see how they've changed. There, uh, this guy's still here. Oh, but his cage is, is open now. That guy finally was able to get out of there. Well, this uh, metal processing machine, it's not going to work anymore. It's busted. But now that this is open, we can get the Duralumin case and some shotgun shells. Now, Chris is not a master of unlocking. He does not have a lockpick, so he can't open that case. He can take it, but he can't get that open. Let's try going to the other side. Well, this is the room where Steve really messed up and crashed the digger into a pipe. But don't worry, that's not here anymore. What's here is a lot of ice and frozen zombies underneath the ice. We can take the valve handle, the octavalve handle. We can take that with us. One moment. Did we look at the shotgun? Spass 12? 
combat shotgun developed for military use. Use a 12 gauge 12 gauge shell. I don't know. I don't remember if we looked at it. There it is. So here's a thing. I believe I mentioned this before. But heads don't explode in this game. I mentioned that when, uh... I believe Claire kicked the zombie's head. But the shotgun... does not make them explode either. Kills them just like, they, like it does, but... No head popping. Oh, and by the way, I don't think the game ever actually states why there are zombies here. I think it's just supposed to be that... when... the planes were diverted, like Claire and Steve's plane, and I think the other planes that left the island, I think they were all diverted here. And they crashed here, which released some T-virus that, that was on the planes. I think that's all it is? I don't think there's any other explanation as to why there are zombies here. Alright, so before we go into that new door, there is a couple other rooms we can look at. And, and, you know, you wouldn't really ask the question, why are there zombies? Because it's a Resident Evil game, so you're not really questioning that, but... No reason's ever really given for it, for why there would be any here. Here are the barracks. Oh, did not get this. Grenade rounds. I think we could have gotten that as Claire, but I did not get to- I did not see that. Useless books. Okay, both Redfields feel that books are useless. There's no purpose for them. Get them out of here. The, the both siblings share the same opinion. zombies so those malls aren't here anymore we can't go in here because the the next room is full of ice so that's not a room we can ever go back into now one reason we might want to come in here there's a halberd-shaped space in the pillar. We still have that gold halberd. We can use it again here. Take the paperweight? Sure. And... There's Alfred's diary. Oh, but we love reading about Alfred's personal thoughts. January 30th. There's a sealed room in the hallway located inside of the Antarctic facility. I don't know what's hidden there, but I do know how to get in. I can use the three jewels that each one of our three family members wear as proof of being a legitimate descendant of the Ashford family. The only problem is I do not know how I can gain possession of my father's proof. February 17th, I finally succeeded at ent entering that sealed room. I never could have imagined that such an insane secret existed regarding the birth of both Alexia and myself. I hate my father, that fool Alexander. Now it is obvious that we were merely created in an attempt to cover my father's blunder. I can never trust him again. I must regain the 
glory of the Ashford family with my sister. I have nothing to be afraid of as long as Alexia is with me. March 3rd. Alexia carried out the experiment on the human body that we've been talking about. Our useless father must be happy now, since he can finally contribute to the Ashford family. The only thing is we should be careful about that the butler, Harmon, does not become wise to our activities. April 22nd. The experiment resulted in failure. Our father was useless after all. Even worse, he turned into a dangerous monster that is completely out of control. We tied him down and locked him up in an underground prison cell. However, Alexia seems to be close to a solution. Beyond all my expectations, she now says that she wishes to conduct the experiment on her own body. On top of that, she feels she must be kept asleep for 15 years in order to accomplish the experiment. Thanks to that idiot, I can't see my dear Alexia for as long as 15 years. Alexia is going to sleep with all of her trust relying upon me. Now, I am the only one who can protect Alexia. All right. There's something else here. Uh, I don't really need that. Okay, as we might suspect, uh, Nosferatu is indeed Alexander Ashford, who uh, the twins experimented on. Experiment was a failure. He became a monster man. And the reason they did this was because... Uh, Alfred got into a secret room and found out something that he really didn't like. Something about he said that they were created to cover for uh, Alexander's failure. Well, we don't know what the secret room is or where it is, but maybe we should find it and read some juicy details. All right, so. Alexia deliberately put herself... Uh, you know, this... No, I'll, I'll hold on to this for a little bit longer. Just a little bit. Uh, so Alexia deliberately did put herself into the, um... The capsule. To go to sleep for 15 years because that's what the experiment would require. What exactly the experiment is and... What would be the success state of it is still a bit unclear. Nothing in here for us. Oh, we should take a look at this. We pick this up. The paperweight. It's got different designs on each side. A tool used to hold documents so they don't scatter. That is what a paperweight does. Oddly, though, uh, Chris is not acknowledging that there are designs on it. The, like, this that's what a paperweight does, yes. It holds down papers. Oh, there we go. I can't figure out if the meaning on the designs on its top and bottom, but this item seems to be related to Umbrella Inc. Yeah, because that's the Umbrella logo right there. Well, maybe we should take that with us. Actually, there is another item that we could that we could make use of at this point in time. An item that's been sitting sitting around for a while, being forgotten about, but one that might be useful. We brought this empty extinguisher with us. Claire used it back at the beginning of the game to put out a fire. It's useless now. It's empty. Nothing you can do with that. But it's been sitting in this box for a while.
All right, so let's go into the new door and explore a part of the Antarctic base that Claire was not able to reach. Don't know if we can dodge that one. All right, yeah, Wesker's here, and he brought his toys with him. It's a lot of blood up there. There's a switch. Let's push it. Mm-hmm. That says extinguisher on it. It's extinguishant. It should be used with a fire extinguisher. We could use it with this one. I've used the extinguishant. Oh, the satisfying sound of filling up a fire extinguisher. I can extinguish fire with this. And this is the moment where some people playing the game for the first time saying, oh, right, right, the empty fire extinguisher. Wait, why isn't that in the box? Why don't I have it anymore? Because it's sitting in a security box in a different part of the game. Why do we need a fire extinguisher? Because back in the weapon room, this fire is raging. And past that... Yeah, that's a magnum. Go to tip. Colt Python. An American gun it uses 357 Magnum rounds. Right, so if you don't bring the empty extinguisher with you, you cannot get the Magnum. It's not essential to get that, but you know, it's a Resident Evil game. You want to get the Magnum. Also over here, remember earlier Claire planted this heat-sensitive explosive, but she was not able to set it because she did not have a lighter. Chris has a lighter. Oh, hold on. There we go. And what treasures... What treasures await inside? It's handgun ammo. A little anticlimactic. I don't, I don't really I don't really need it. I mean, I mean that's what's in there. There's lots of chemicals here. I wonder what purposes they were used for. Well, as we know from Resident Evil 1, Chris is not very good with chemicals. Needs Rebecca to do that part. It's tightly shut. Yeah, the room outside is full of ice. Now, as for what's up here... I should let the water out of the water tank. There's a small square hollow. There's a notice. You can drain the water under the following conditions. One, to clean the tank. Two, to exchange the water. So you might notice something. There's a small square hollow. Our, our valve handle used to have a square knob. It doesn't anymore. We had to cut it into an octagon. And that, w that won't work here. 
anything else in this room. Nothing strange. Actually, is, can we? Is there anything for that? No, nothing strange. Nothing strange. Well, I could leave, but it'll be here when I come back. Hello? Y you coming? I, I get, okay, he doesn't know what I, he doesn't see me. He still, he still doesn't see me. There we go. He's just a, a little confused. Missed his mark. You might hear someone coming. Give me a sec. Alright, we're not going that way yet. It's a little dark in here. Chris does have the lighter, so he can illuminate. An electricity connecting device. But there's a hollow in the shape of an octagon, and that's the kind of hollow we like to hear about. And let me put this away. And... And, and that away, and this away, and the magnum for now. We don't quite need the magnum just yet. What we do need is the octavalve handle. All right, that's connected. And the power's on. Uh, we can- I guess we can hold on to that for right now. We will need it. Over here we find kind of a strange looking, kind of a fancy looking area. The walls painted like a blue sky with a carousel here. Like for two children to play, like to pretend that they're playing outside. Here we find the wing object. We've taken it. Appears to be dragonflies' wings. Seems to be a part of something. Yeah, dragonflies and their wings. And ants. Common thing that's been coming up concerning the Ashfords. 
second wing object is here. And what do we find through this fancy looking door? So this was a very cool thing, you know, back back then, playing for this for the first time. There was a note you read earlier where Alexander mentions that he builds a fa he built a facsimile of the mansion in the Antarctic base. You might have forgot about that. But it's a very cool thing to walk in here and see this. It's not quite right. There's no door there. It's, and this one's locked. A biohazard symbol is carved by the keyhole. It's a picture of the twins and their father. They're, they have weird holes. There's one at the boy's finger, the man's ear, and the girl's bosom. Three holes, you say? It's locked. And over here, for some reason, is a knife. Maybe you don't have one with you at the moment. And maybe there's some reason you might need to have one. Well, we don't see anything really around in here, except maybe we want to remember in Resident Evil 1, at the beginning of the game, when you're searching the main hall for, uh, for Wesker, the game doesn't count you as done searching the main hall until you look behind the stairs. It Claire! She has fainted inside the cocoon. I need some kind of tool to open it. Like maybe a knife. Steve. Who's Steve? He's a boy who escaped from that island with me. But then a monster attacked us and we got separated. So that means Steve is still somewhere in this base? I'm sure of it. Claire? What's wrong? I think... I think I've been poisoned. Just hold on. I'll be right back. So finally, Chris and Claire have met each other again. Claire's poisoned. I need serum. This house is full of terrible demons. Ouch. Well, I mean, I mean, Chris has retrieved uh, serum before. Um. So now Chris has learned about the existence of Steve. I mean, this is something that we all have to deal with in our lives. There's a par part of most of your life you go through blissfully unaware of Steve. And at some point, you just you have to confront the fact that Steve exists. And what are we going to do about this? Well, we one thing we have to do is look around for serum. Which I found to be a little frustrating. Uh, you'll see why in a bit. Before we actually go get the serum... There's a few things that we can do. Oh, someone's still up. And I have 2% left ammo. That's good, because... It's probably, uh, an appropriate time to actually... Dit ditch the AK. Uh, 
I can put the wings away for right now, as well as the knife, as well as the blue herb. I have shotgun. Uh, shotgun on its own is probably fine for right now. So hey, uh, Claire's whole plotline from RE2 about where brother must find brother, why isn't brother here now? It's been resolved. She found brother. Also, she she's alive. She was not killed by Alexia. Rather, Alexia, I don't know, wrapped her up in a whole bunch of snot. What a familiar looking room. A woman drawing water. What did Alexi intend to do with Claire? I'm not sure. It's cracked. Talking about the floor. So this is the other side of this door. It might seem strange that this is locked since we can easily get to either side of the door, but there's a reason why they want to lock it for now. Now, in the original RE1, the whole thing was you had you like you moved some stairs, you pushed it over to the statue, then you got on the stairs and took the map. There are no stairs here, but this time, in this game, everything is polygons. So we can just move this on its own. No pre-rendered backgrounds here. We will take a map of the lab. I got a map of the lab. There's the map of the lab. It appears to be a protective suit. So yeah, the mansion's pretty different over here. This is not where the tiger statue was in the original mansion. And uh, the jewel eyeballs are already there. Take a jewel? Sure. I'll take the left one. I've taken the left one. It seems to work by electric power. We should remember that. Take the socket? I've taken it. What is the socket? Well, I can put the jewel back. Let's do that first of all. This appears to be some kind of socket. It has an octagonal hollow. It has a square projection. Well, don't that just beat all? It's an octagon to square adapter for our valve handle. <laughs> there we go. We've made it a square valve handle again. It's an octa shaped valve handle with a square socket. The day is saved. Someone at some point in the past in this mansion needed that adapter. Let's take the right one. And what do we have? But we have magnum bullets. We'll put the jewel back. All right, we've taken the tre we've taken the tiger's treasures. Magnum cartridge. This contains powerful bullets for a magnum gun. All right, we got to get decontaminated before we go into the next room, so you know it's important. Hearing some squelching noises and seeing some bugs in the foreground. Oh 
Oh no, it's a thing. Looks like it's a big tube and a wing object. All right, that's our third wing object. Let's squelch some bugs. The bugs can't hurt us, but we can also step on them. We see some blood along the wall. What has happened here? Well, in the cutscene where Alfred was dragging himself along the wall to the lab where Alexia was in her tube, well, this is that wall, this is that door. The tension could be cut with a combat knife. Well, we don't see the, t the capsule now. It seems to be retracted into the floor. But, uh, there's a whole lot of blood here. Something's written on this. As twins, Alexia and I are two sides of a coin. A design is carved under the name of Alexia. So, we got... Let me just type this down. We got heart. We got ace. We got AA. We got crown. There's a button with a design. Push the button. Press which one? Well, we could try doing it in the order they gave us. That's heart. And ace. And AA. And crown. There's no response. All right. So we got to use got to use our little decoder thing here. Our decoder paperweight. All right. So the first one was was heart. So Alfred and Alexia are two sides of a coin. In this or in this case two sides of a paperweight. What's on the other side? Well, there's AA. The next one is ace. Okay, what's on the other side of this? The crown. The next one mentioned was uh let's see, AA. Well, we now we now know that what's on the other side of AA is the heart. And the last one was crown, and on the other side of crown was was ace. So that's what so we use the the paperweight to de to de determine the code. But Chris cannot figure out the meaning. All right, so let's go with push the button for AA, crown, heart, and ace. Square compartment opens up. We should put something in there. Why not the paperweight? It looks like it would fit. I don't know who this is, Chris says. I mean, he's never met before. But we t we're taking the Alfred's ring. Can't- I don't think we get a descri- oh no, he's already dead. Yeah, so Alfred Ashford making one final appearance for us. His final resting place where his uh, sister put him in the capsule where she's been spending the last 15 years, and we now have his ring. The jewel portion can be removed. It's, we've removed the metal portion. We obtained the Alfred's jewel. The least Chris could do is just shove him back into the capsule. He's not gonna. He's got a sister to save. But, uh, do I need the green herbs? Eh, we're doing fine. Alright, let's try the other side of this.
You see, now, okay, that guy starts moving. I guess you can't shoot him previously? Prior to him moving? I'm not sure if that's the case. All right, also, let's equip our lighter, as it's a bit dim in here. No comments about the books, whether they're useless or not. It's a portrait of a beautiful woman. The master of Ashford family, Veronica. Right, the founder of the family. Not a very big family, really. Like, when you say, when they talk about how it's this powerful family that has a head, like a, a master of the family, that makes it sound like it's, fa it's fairly large. But as far as we can tell, the only people in the Ashford family that exist now, well, were Alfred and Alexia. Pri previously their dad, before they experimented on him. Doesn't seem like there's other there are other members of the family. Or if there are, we never hear about them. Uh, let's read research report on Queen Ant. After discovering the remains of an ancient virus within the genes of a queen ant, I've been concentrating on the research of ants. The ecosystem of the ants seems truly ideal to me. There is one queen ant in each anthill, and the soldier and worker ants are the queen's slaves. They dedicate their lives to the queen. The death of the queen ant means the doom of the entire anthill. However, the soldier and worker ants can easily be replaced as long as the queen ant is, is alive. This is exactly the same relationship between myself and the other ignorant masses. I have succeeded in creating an ideal virus by implanting the queen ant's gene into the mother virus that Spencer found. I use my otherwise useless father as a test subject. However, as I expected, the virus caused a rapid change in his cells, triggering the complete destruction of his brain cells and body flesh. Furthermore, a special type of poison gas was generated inside his body that the blue herb had no effect against. Because of this, I created an antidote in the case of emergency and stored it inside of the weapon slash chemical warehouse on the B2 floor. Oh, a special serum, you might say. The thing is, we've already been in the weapon room and there wasn't a serum in there. I've decided to name this virus with unimaginable potential, the T. Veronica virus, because she is not very original when it comes to naming things. Look, biology is her strong suit. When I find out how I can utilize the power of this wonderful virus, my great research will finally be complete. Alexia Ashford. All right, we haven't really heard anything directly from Alexia about what her mindset is. That room's beeping. It's where the serum is. But uh, now we know the entire purpose of her research was that she wants to become the queen ant of humanity. So that's what the whole ant thing is about. The whole ant symbolism. That's what her virus is trying to do. A computer terminal. It must have been hooked to a supercomputer. The queen ant is dead. The anthill seems to have perished. Eh, I don't need this anymore. Alright, so we learned uh, what her plans are and why she wanted to put herself in a tube for 15 years because she needed to prepare her body to be the, the queen. Now she's all queened up and ready to go. I need to put anything away. See, I have, uh... I'm not carrying the Magnum with me for the time being. Though actually, maybe I should. 
Yeah, actually, I should... I should sort out some items at this point. Let's see. Um... I can put wing away. I don't need wing at the moment. But let me take magnum. And... I want that. Magnum, jewel, shotguns, and shotgun ammo. Yeah, this is probably okay. Mind the scanners. Alright, so up here, there was a square port. But now we have the octa to square converter. No. Too far away. Here we go. All right. And we don't actually need that valve handle anymore. It's been valved out. And what do we find? A crane key. Right, so we saw uh, Nosferatu, or as we now know, Alexander Ashford's body in the ice on the crane. So we have the key for that crane now. And just to be clear, if you're not prepared for things like that, maybe you don't have the right weapon out or whatnot, th those, uh, those occasions can be a big problem. So let's see. Yeah, we want to go back to the crane now. Which is right here. All right, let's see. What do we need from Alexander's body? Who could have done this? I dispose of insignificant bugs, said the spider to the fly. How do you wish to die? Right, giant spider is out. We didn't consider that. When we pulled Alexander out of the ice, we did not consider the giant spider also coming out. But when we, when we pulled Alexander up, he dropped this. Alexander's pierce. We've taken the Alexander's pierce. Look how pretty it is. He was wearing this on his ear. It is actually on his ear, if you look close enough. All right, now we got his gem. And what are we gonna do about this giant spider? Well. Yep, 
yeah, that's two bosses you can just run away from. It's... We don't need to go back that way. Look, the giant spider can just enjoy his giant spider body. And, uh, we don't need to cross paths. Oh, wait, before we go this way... Uh, yeah, that's right. We need to take another trip to the weapons room. Because we did read in Alexia's journal that she did make the special antidote for the poison generated by Alexander's body. The blue herb doesn't work on it, so she had to make a special one. And uh, Claire is currently poisoned by that particular poison. Let's head back down here. So this was a little frustrating for me the first time I played the game, because I had already examined this room. And I, there is a bit where the map comes up and flashes, so it does show you that. Oh. But still. After you, after you do that, this is suddenly here. Wasn't here before. It's the serum. I've taken the serum. Watch out! Medicine that will help against special poison. Uh, I think that's the same text that was on... Aside from watch out, I think that's the same text that was on the Clement bottle. About someone's blood type. It's hard to read, though. We're gonna give Claire the serum. I feel like this is another one of those moments where someone might get frustrated because they walk into a, a scene that maybe they weren't prepared for. So let's go in here. Right now, the magnum and the ammo will do. And I'll just, I'll do a safety save. All right, ty uh, typewriter's over here. Ant base, SR. All right, let's head back to the fake mansion. Um, the front hall, where Claire is. And when, since we have the serum, we'll be able to fix her up right as rain. Claire. I'll take care of you now. Feeling better? Thanks to you. Just like a big brother, huh? You're always looking out for your little sister. <laughs> it's Alexia! Alexia? There really is an Alexia? <laughs> 
It is almost time, you genetically inferior siblings. <laughs> After her! She might know where Steve is. Let's go. <laughs> Just go. I'll be fine. But Chris... You've got to save Steve. Go! Now uh, Chris and Claire were reunited, but separated once again. Now control goes back to Claire, who was still very hurt from the Nosferatu fight. Let's pick some stuff up while we're here. Yeah, so she has the same health and same, um, inventory that she had from that point. Alright, so we heard Steve yelling. Sounds like he's in trouble. Needs our help. And I- I guess we gotta save Steve. I suppose. Also behind here, what could this hook be used for? Well, Claire has not seen one of these before, uh, but Chris has. Oh, hold on. Duralumin case. Don't forget that this is here, because this is your only chance to open it. Uh, no, not that. This. And we get more Magnum Rounds. But Claire does not need those. But let us take the shotgun for a second. Shotgun so versatile, both weapon and key. Some flame rounds. And some grenade rounds. Chris will be in this room later, so you don't have to ha be able to do this as Claire. Just in case Chris still had the shotgun. Okay, so... Despite all the stuff that we have, Claire doesn't actually really need any weapons. I'm gonna put all this stuff back. Uh, she'll keep her handgun. But what I will take... Take a couple healing items. Should only only need one, but just in case. All right. Let's get going to save Steve. St I mean, we have been way too long without Steve. The last time we saw Steve, it was when Alexia woke up. We have been Steveless. Get out of here, you.
Well, this is locked from the other side. Nothing we can do with that. So, so far, the superpower that Alexia has displayed is the power of Tentacle. What else she's capable of, we don't know. But that's what she's been showing us so far. Presumably, subjects for experiments. An emergency evacuation elevator. It'll only work in an emergency. So the other end of this goes to the, uh, the hangar. Chris saw the other side of this when he got out of the jet. file. The Ashford family's most important secret is kept at this lab. As a safety precaution, I have installed a self-destruct device in the control room and have placed the activation code inside the computer. Once inputted... Once inputted? You could just say once input, I think. All door locks will be released to provide easy access to escape routes. By using the elevator that directly connects to the hangar, one should be able to escape from the lab easily. Please remember that I have used the name of my beautiful ancestor for the activation code. Glory to the Ashfords! Alexander Ashford. Alright, this you thought you had uh, enough of self-destruct mechanisms. We had one so far. No, we got a second one two bombs going off in the single game. There's a handle. Turn it. So, you know, I still get nervous at this bit. I've done it many times. But if that weight on the ceiling hits you, it does. it is one, a one-hit kill. That does just kill you. A well-polished crystal. It contains a card inside. I could obtain the card if I crack it. Yeah, it says emergency destruction system. Emergency. Emergency. We need to get it out of this crystal ball? Why is it in here? I don't know. How do we crack it? I wonder. And it clicks into place. Okay, so it's done. Yes, that will kill you, if you do it wrong. A card used to release the security lock. It's locked. There's a hollow in the shape of a dragonfly. Well, we know the Ashfords love their dragonflies. A security release for the linear launcher. Lock is automatically released in an emergency. Yeah, everything opens up in case of an emergency. How to release the security? Well, first, that, that sign says, Warning, the anti-BOW linear launcher should only be used in a first-class emergency situation. Instructions. To use... Turn both, one word, turn both, the left and right keys clockwise simultaneously, and then push the keys in to release the safety lock. The weapon will be ready for use after the energy charge is complete, and the weapon lock is released. Okay, how to release the security. In an emergency, both, turn both devices simultaneously. It will release once charging is completed. So there's a weapon here. It, o it only unlocks in a first-class emergency, and it needs to be charged. Well, nothing we can do here right now. This is not an emergency, mind you. If you were wondering, this is not an emergency. 
This is just like a second class emergency. We need a first cl real first class emergency to qualify for the for the linear launcher. The iron grid is down. It might open with the card reader on the right. A card reader. The security lock is active. I will use the card. Well, that's odd. Door locked. that she did on her own father. She's completely insane. Uh, 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 What's wrong? Claire, can't breathe. Claire, help me. All right, we gotta run. All right, so he hit us once. We are in orange caution. Uh, a second hit is death.
Steve? 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 <laughs> Pour one out for Steve. <laughs> At last, I found you, Alexia. Come with me. <laughs> You're responsible for the creation of the T. Veronica virus. And now the only existing sample is in your body. I want it. Now! You want it? You are not worthy of its power! We are not messing around with this boss fight. All right, so Alexia. Uh, to sum up, in this boss fight, she is walking towards us. If she touches us, it is death. It is a one hit kill. Does not matter how much health we have. Her attack is to throw blood at us, which will then ignite. Um, and the fire will do damage if it touches us. That's not really the problem, though. The problem is that Chris will be stunned for a couple of seconds uh, if he gets hit by that, which allows her to get closer to us for the touch. Like that. But oh, wrong button. Hold on. Yep. She can also vomit on us. That doesn't really matter that much. You just don't want to get fired. Yeah, that. Five Magnum Bullets. It is a much, much harder fight if you don't have the right weapons for this. Can't examine her, though. But she did drop this. Take the, Alex the Alexius Choker. Yes! It fell off when she went Super Saiyan. The jewel portion can be removed. Take the jewel? We will. We got three jewels. A red jewel that was attached to a choker. Alright, so Wesker ran out the door, but we don't need to do that. Because we have three jewels. And we have this painting with the weird holes. So we can open this up. And we read a le we read a Alfred's diary where he said that he was infuriated by whatever it was that he found on the other side of this. That's probably fine.
it appears to be some kind of control panel. An electronic microscope. It appears to be old. A button on the panel. Let's push that button. Alright, another wing object. We don't know what they- we don't have anything that they plug into, but we got the objects. A large caps- you know, science. Science is happening here. Oh. I, you know, I was thinking, am I missing something in here? Yeah, it's over here. There's a particularly important file right here. Why it's the Code Veronica report. Okay, what is Code Veronica? After many long years of research, I finally identified the inheritance element that administers the intelligence of man. It's a very scientific way of putting it. I even succeeded in manipulating the absolute value of intelligence artificially by recomposing the base alignment of the element. Ah, yes, I see. I understand. I then sampled the gene of our great ancestor, manipulated its element, and then implanted it into the unfertilized egg of a surrogate mother. What I didn't expect was that twins, a boy and a girl, were born. The boy had higher intelligence than normal, but not high enough for him to be considered a genius. However, the girl had unmatched intelligence that easily allowed her to be classified as a genius. She was exactly what I had been looking for, the revival of our great ancestor. I already determined their names, the girl's name Alexia, the boy's name Alfred. I am certain that Alexia will elevate the name of the Ashford family to extreme glory! Alexander Ashford. Okay, so, Code Veronica was Alexander's secret project, and it was... He took the genes of Veronica and then modif- he found the way to modify human intelligence and like turned it all the way up to 11 and then implanted that in a woman, in an embryo in a woman. Twins were born and Alexia turned out to be like the super genius resurrection of Veronica that he was hoping for. That's Code Veronica. Uh, Alfred, I don't know why he's so angry about this. I, it, maybe he feels like it's weird that they were, like, created in a lab. I don't know why he should have a problem with that. Maybe, or he, does he feel insulted because he, he was not the super genius? I don't know. He doesn't seem to hold that against Alexia. He seems to be fine with the idea that Alexia was the one who actually got, like, the super genius genes. But he does seem to be quite insulted that, uh, th that this is how they were born. And that Alexander did this because Alexander was losing ground in the field of T-virus research uh, to Spencer. Spencer was making advancements, and because of that, he was getting a controlling interest in Umbrella. So remember they said at the beginning, Alfred, um, Grandfather Ashford and Spencer co-founded Umbrella, but Spencer was the one who was now, like, really doing the research and getting, like, results and making progress, and because of that, Ashford was losing ground. And that's, like, Alexander's big disgrace. It's a portrait of a beautiful woman. Veronica. We got a sterile room key. Biohazard symbol. Yeah, we saw the biohazard door in the faux mansion. But I think that we have to just take some time to digest these incredible revelations, as well as grieve the tragic death of Steve. Oh, Steve, he died so young. Steve getting an extremely dramatic uh, death. 
which I mean, clearly Steve would want. Steve would want the hero's death. All right, so Steve's story arc came to a completion. You remember the whole thing was that he felt like you, he started off the game feeling like you couldn't rely on people. Guns were much more reliable because Steve himself was not able to rely on his dad. But then Claire showed him, yes, you can rely on people. Those are the strongest connections you can have. And so Steve uh, decided that he needed to be someone that Claire could rely on and was disappointed in himself when he wasn't able to do that. He messed up, of course, with um, moving the digger and breaking the toxic pipe. He got smacked around by Nosferatu, and Claire had to had to handle that. And so Steve was saying, "Next time, I'll, next time I'll save you, Claire." Uh, and so in the end, Steve finally came through, and even though he was a monster man, his determination f to be someone Claire could rely on brought him through to cut the tentacle and take the hit. And now he's dead. Claire's very sad about this. Uh, in the meantime... Wesker got smacked around by Alexia. Wesker was showing some moves earlier to Chris, um, was not showing those moves off against Alexia. I do like in that scene where Wesker's standing there and he says, the only sample of the T. Veronica virus is in your body. I want it now. And he holds his hand out. What does he think Alexia is going to put in his hand? Right here. Put it right. Come on. I want it. Give it to me now. I, I, I don't know what he was expecting, but he got it. He got a couple of slaps for his trouble. And uh, we were able to Magnum Alexia until she fell, but she got back up. She's still walking around somewhere. So Chris trying to find his way back to Claire. Claire with Steve grieving. Alexia status unknown, Wesker status unknown, as uh, we say goodnight for right now, and next time we head into the very end of Resident Evil Code Veronica for the Dreamcast. <laughs>